for Ask Annex. As always, got a question for us, you head to our website, AnnexWealth.com. Look for the Ask tab. As always, if we can help, click that Get Started button. Sarah Kyle's in the studio. She's a wealth manager at Annex Wealth Management. Welcome. Hi, Danny. Matt Morsey, investment team manager, CFP at Annex Wealth Management. Welcome to you. Hey, Danny. First question from Omar. What tools or indicators are available to identify potential trends or reversals in stocks? Wow, he's a serious question. <laughs> Omar, you can check with your custodian. There are a large number of free indicators that the custodians offer. Most of them will also offer support to help you learn how to use those different indicators. So, But the key is just it's important to choose an indicator that works best for your trading style. Next is from Mike. Are there currently more value or growth opportunities? And that's a great question, Mike. And, you know, that's certainly, you know, specific to the time that we're having this conversation. From our standpoint, value has been looking more attractive than growth. Now, value has outperformed over the last year or so, so we're not the only ones that have thought that as well. Part of that's due to the rising interest rates of our response to the Fed's actions. And as long as that's the environment that we're in, companies that pay dividends that have higher profitability that are returning that cash back to shareholders are things that are generally going to work better. Again, generally, there's always going to be exceptions to that. And then as we move forward and we get to a spot where rates have stopped rising and they're more stable, or, or even if we start to go into a recession, they start to come back down. Uh, that's probably an area where growth might look a little bit more attractive. Yeah. And Matt, don't you think some of those companies have their debt coming up for refinancing and then they will have to pay that higher interest rate? Yeah. That's one of the things, especially, you know, when we look at growth companies, at least through 2021, it was almost unprofitable tech was really the place to be. But if you're unprofitable and you're not being able to pay your bills, you got to keep continuing to take more and more debt out. Exactly right. When you're starting to borrow at six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent, it becomes really hard to sustain that. And that's the area of the market that really got pounded over the last year. Here's one from Ted. I plan on retiring early 2025. Do I wait until then to do Roth conversions? Is there a limit on how many I can do? I will wait on taking Social Security until 26 or 27. So my income in 25 will be low. Well, Ted, of course, it all depends on your unique tax and financial situation. But general rule of thumb is we like to do the Roth conversions the years between retirement and required minimum distribution age. That is generally when the income is the lowest. But that's not always the case, but typically it is. And there's no limit to how many Roth conversions you can do. We just want to make sure the annual amount makes the most sense from a tax and a financial planning standpoint. We have to be sensitive to that IRMA threshold for Medicare premiums and Social Security taxation as well as the tax brackets. One from Artie, large U.S. companies like McDonald's are still opening stores in China. Coca-Cola has a big presence. P&G, with the current unrest, is that creating undue exposure to those companies? Yeah, it certainly increases the risk and the oversight that you need to have in the companies you're investing in. And we see what happened with Russia and Ukraine, that uh, once that war started, so many companies pulled out of Russia and they're not doing business there anymore. China's probably a different story in terms of the size of the consumer there and how important it is for a lot of U.S. companies. We just recently met with a couple portfolio managers that deal a lot with China, and they have different viewpoints on how that's working, going to work through. They both understand the risk, and one of them is significantly underweight China. The other one has a little bit different viewpoint where they don't believe the risk is as high. But it also depends on what type of companies you're, you're dealing with, too, and your confidence in the management of that company to be able to s- foresee what's going on and be able to weigh the reward of that consumer base with the risk of investing in another country. And like KFC is just enormous in China, right? Yeah. And they, from my understanding, it's not the same KFC. You know, they don't, they don't have the same menus over there that they do here. So I'd be really curious to go into one of them and see what they have to offer. Uh, but yeah, a lot of times they go into those other countries and create a brand new menu that's specific to where they are. All right. Uh, last one is from Cole. This question is from Matt. Number one, love the SWAT podcast. Number two, how often do you find what might have been a strength two months ago is now a weakness or vice versa? Are there ever times where a strength is also a threat? Well, thank you very much, Cole. We appreciate that. It's a lot of fun for us as an investment team to do and something that we believe provides a lot of value as well. So thank you very much. Certainly, when we plan those podcasts out and we're going through some of that research that we do, it's very common for something I think to be either a strength or a weakness and then have an opposite effect from an opportunity or threat standpoint. And part of that is that we're very forward looking when we try to do those. So at times, maybe the consumer has been really strong. 
And that's something that that is helping the economy stay afloat with rising interest rates and some of the other negatives that are coming down the the path. But as we look forward, that's an area that could become a weakness later on as credit card balances continue to pile up. Interest rate on those balances, same thing with mortgage rates, car loan rates, all those things going up. That's an area that could be a threat going forward. In terms of over time, how many of them flip? It's probably less than most would think. When we're looking out and trying to think through that, Although we live in a 24-7 world right now with news media and and be able to see everything, it it feels like things change quite a bit. But in reality, it takes a long time for the economy to move and to change. And a lot of what the Fed's done over the last year really hasn't even started to impact yet. So some of those things are are, are longer tail than, than you would probably think. This is why it's confusing. This is why you need a plan. That's Ask Annex. Matt Morsey, CFP, Investment Team Manager. Thanks. Thank you, Danny. Sarah Kyle, Wealth Manager at Annex Wealth Management. Thank you. You're welcome. 